Well, if we're going to work our way through the Beast Wars Predacon faction, then eventually we were going to run into he who gives his loyalty to the royalty, none other than my custom, Beast Wars Inferno. And he's going to be our focus in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am so happy that you're here. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot, as always. Please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, NL, and me everywhere. And if we're going through the Predacon faction from the Beast Wars line era of the franchise, if you will, then naturally we were going to do this guy. And uh, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to get him, like... It seemed like he was real pricey, man. Too pricey for my blood. But I found a decent deal. Now, admittedly, he's not 100%. He's missing his mandible down right here, which is unfortunate. But, you know, for finding this guy in the aftermarket for about $17 Canadian, <laughs> like, I think it was worth it. If I ever see the mandible, hey, maybe I'll pick it up. But I'm not so concerned about it because it doesn't affect much. What I did, however, notice was that... When I got him and kind of compared him back to the animation, boy, oh boy, was the toy missing a lot of paint applications. So I, I took it upon myself, of course, to add said paint applications. Nevertheless, even with that aside, is this a good figure or is it not a good figure? It's kind of astonishing for what it is. That's not to say he doesn't have an uphill climb, though, because he's an ant. I don't like ants. When I was four, I stood in an ant patch, and they kind of engulfed me. They bite. It's not fun when you're four. Just saying. So, while he's an impressive figure, <laughs> I already got an axe to grind against this guy. Let's head over to the table, however, and take a closer look at him anyway. Okay, and here, of course, we have Beast Wars Predacon Inferno, and I don't care about his loyalty to the royalty. I don't know if it's going to save this guy because, right away, and you guys heard the story, I have a grudge against Ants. Not a fan, so it's an uphill climb for this dude immediately. Now, before we get into him, just a couple of very quick shout-outs here. First and foremost to Liam. Uh, check out his channel, FQH, here on YouTube, as well as Obi and his channel, Obi Matt, O B Y, capital M A T. I think they do gameplay related stuff. I think. I think. I'm not sure. Check them out. Uh, a couple of young guys just kind of trying to get up and going. And uh, shout out to Sarah because she asked for it. So this one's for you, kid. Anyway, on with Inferno here. All right. So I. We'll give credit where credit's due. I like the translucent red that's used here because it feels like solid and dense, but it gives a beautiful kind of sheen and luster to the guy that plays nicely against the green that's on his, I don't know, his thorax? Is that his tail on his thorax? I don't know the parts of an Ant-Man. As well as the kind of solid red plastic that makes up the rest of his body. It looks pretty good. Now you will probably notice as well that we have kind of a lot of custom paint apps done here. And indeed we do. Fresh in a package, this guy's pretty much a mix of red, largely translucent red, and black for the legs, as well as uh, the green that's on the, the tail thorax section. And that's about it. You don't need much more for him to be a fire ant. It makes sense. It is what it is. Uh, because I wanted a more accurate robot mode, it meant I had to kind of uh, add some color and a little stylizing to the alt mode, but I think, I think that that's acceptable to me if it gives me a more accurate robot mode. This guy, I will also say, is not quite 100%. We don't have a box, we don't have instructions. As a matter of fact, I am missing uh, I, one part of him, but I, I found this guy years later, found this guy on the cheap, and uh, I couldn't resist it, so that's why I picked him up. And like, he is complete enough for what I need him for, for my purposes. Uh, yeah, nevertheless, he does come with, by right, two accessories. One is kind of his, like, gaping maw uh, in this mode, 
which is what I'm missing. And the other one is this little blaster thing that currently is pegged in way up there on his front claw, mandible. I'm not sure what you call it. Uh, but nevertheless, that's really the only place I have found where I can store it in this mode. Before we look at that, I'll quickly run through the articulation in this mode, which is surprisingly good, to be honest with you. We have rear legs here that they can move out to the side and there's a knee and, you know, they can bend this way and bend forward a bit and you can bend them right up. We have these ones here that are a solid piece, but they're on a ball joint, so they can move all around. And then on the front, we can use the shoulder hinge and go up and go out to the side and bend the elbow and this knee or this like lower leg section can bend. The head can wiggle a little bit. There's a ton of posability here. A lot of people complain and say the ant mode will not stand. The ant mode will stand but what you need to realize is that all the weight is pretty much resting on these two legs with the other four serving more as stabilizers to keep them in a like a stood up position. Is it precarious? Eh. It's not going to take much to knock him over, but as long as you have the center legs touching the ground, he will be just fine. This is the only accessory I have for him, and like, it's a little blaster, I don't know, it's alright I guess, I suppose. It obviously at some point had a project projectile that goes in the front and is loaded by that little spring trigger mechanism down there. It's not, like... It's supposed to be more with him than this, but this was all that he came with. Like I said, I got the guy on the cheap. What more do you want, man? So at this point, I can honestly say that this Mega figure, because that's the size class he was, Mega, from 1996, going back 23 years, is actually really impressive. It's one of the best beast modes that I think I've encountered because there's still so much articulation for him, as well as, honestly, a really nice look. I I do wish that I had the mandible claw that makes up his mouth. And, uh, like, I looked up after, because I said, you know what? I said, no, I said, there's something else about how that, like, missile launcher thing works. And indeed, there's his legs, these here, can come off, apparently, and become like missiles for that launcher. Maybe I'll show it when we get to robot mode. A lot of times, when you're looking for this guy on the aftermarket, you will end up finding the Metals Inferno from 1999, which is basically just the Predacon Scavenger. It's, it's really the same, it's the exact same figure. So, to me, that's not really... Inferno. It's fine. It's a fine mold. I get it. A lot of people might like it just fine. It's still an ant. It makes sense. But like to me, no, that's Scavenger. Inferno looked like this. So like that's that's what I did. So right now, impressive. I, I'm, I haven't given any scores yet because we're going to do the, uh, the conversion. Maybe I'll show the leg thing now that I, I went back and kind of done my research. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give scores after we get him in robot mode. So how do we begin to get him in robot mode? Well, the nice thing is, it's actually not that bad. It's not too complicated. We begin by really straightening out the leg and folding that up. Straighten out the leg and fold that up. Seems like a good plan to me. Next, we take this whole section here, and there's a hinge back right here, and we bring it up and then hinge it down. Next, we come here to where his hips are, and you'll see that they're opened out. We're going to angle them down and in, and down, and in, and they will peg into each other. It's not as secure as I would like it to be, but like it's, I don't know, it's all right, I guess. So we'll get that together. And then using the ball joint at the knee, we turn the leg around and we turn the leg around. That's the lower body done. And indeed with the lower body done, we can now focus on the upper body. It's pretty straightforward from here. We bring these legs down on the ball pegs and kind of put them out behind. We close up these and we rotate the shoulder down so that these become arms. Good so far. Then there's a panel here on the back, the panel with the green on it. You can open that up so that the head has room to kind of come out. You flip the head out and down over the chest, 
close that panel up we can just straighten up those arms a little bit and then really boom in the end here we have inferno in his robot mode let's kind of reorient ourselves slightly so we can get a better look at him and before we go on i just wanted to point out the head sculpt i think it's glorious it was kind of a stark green i added the silver and i added the metallic blue it gave the face a bit of pop that it didn't have before those i don't know those claw things at the top of his head they were just pure black and his face really was just kind of a pure green nevertheless i mean i guess it's up to you what you prefer but to me this looks like uh a better rendition of what we saw in the animation and for that reason alone i absolutely dig it okay so now that we've seen the head up close i will point out that we are technically missing a piece the kind of mandible that would go up right here is missing uh to me that's a small price to pay it's a small piece i hardly even notice it um would it be nice to have sure if i ever found it would i be happy sure but will i live without it yeah i guess so that being said what did i do here what did i add i added black to these claws and to the one in right there they were just straight up uh translucent red plastic i added purple out here on the forearm and up on the in oh entire upper arm I wanted to tip back there we'll talk about that in a minute or so uh, i put black on top of that purple layered it on the front and back in the appropriate regions sections i suppose i put blue down here on the side of the leg a metallic blue as well as on his waist where i also added purple there's a lot added here but if you were to compare this next to the animation for inferno pretty much all the paint apps are in the right location and the kind of body model that was used here was pretty much spot on so it was really sort of easy to follow where the correct paint apps should go fresh out of package like you knew that this was inferno there's no doubt about it and if you opted to just leave it as the translucent red with you know the the stock paint apps i totally get it it looked good anyway honestly i like the look of it so much and the, even the translucent like it feels like a thick robust translucent i don't think it's going to break and it almost has a speckling to it that i love so right away honestly i think the thing is probably a good eight at a package with the paint apps that make it look more animation accurate i don't know i personally dig it more to me now i'm not gonna say it's perfect but it's pretty close on i'm gonna say it's a solid nine nine is not a bad place to start now what about the transformation everything is logical with it it all makes sense but there's enough moving parts that it's again it's fun it's interesting i dig it it's engineered well but it's not over engineered now are there places that we probably could have benefited from maybe having i don't know a ratchet instead of a ball joint maybe having a hinge and swivel yeah sure there is but honestly considering that this came out in 96 this is what was on the heels of you know transformers generation 2 which was really just reuses of g1 molds and considering how limited they were this was a jump leaps and bounds forward honestly i think it as a transformation of a nine everything is intuitive and logical it makes sense it's engineered well but not over engineered all that leaves is the articulation the posability playability well the very first thing that i want to note is that yes indeed the kind of hand blaster thing that uh he had can uh accommodate like i guess like we'll call it a missile i'm gonna call it a missile for lack of a better term we would bend the arm up and there's a, a little hole here i guess it's a five millimeter port i'm gonna say five millimeter and this has a circular peg up on top here so we can take that and put it kind of in under his hand odd i know but it's what we can do then down here on his legs this leg and the other one are just pegged in it's just they're just pegged into a slot you can take them out you can feed them in there and there you go so i'm i thought i was missing like missile pieces but i'm not uh you know they they fire just fine from that mechanism down there i'm not missing missile pieces it's just i've, I've forgotten that they were in his feet 
I guess. I guess we'll put it backwards. So we do have that. The mandible piece, it too could come out and be sort of in his hand as a blaster, I suppose. We also have on the, the back here, and I think most people will know this, we have the ability for back here to open out, as we know, and then this acts as like a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it really, a thruster, I suppose. And if we get these legs here out of the way for now, there's a button down right here. It does go, like when you close this up, there's only one of these pieces that it slots down to because we have a hole right here. So we we'll open this up and then that button, if you press that, it does make this go around. I guess, I guess that's cool, I suppose. The fact that it works now 23 years later, I think is a testament to a gimmick that actually still works. So he has a couple of pretty, I, I guess, all right gimmicks. Like the fact that the like missile pieces are part of his leg, I think is really cool. It's a really neat feature. What about the actual articulation? Again, remember, this is following up from a break. Right now, the guy, honestly, is getting an overall score of 9. That's where we're to. He's getting an overall score of 9. The head, it can move left and right. It can look up and down. Not much more you could want out of that. The arms, they have limited out to the side movement to about there. They can, however, go all the way around 360. Because of the ball joint at the elbow, we do get an elbow, uh, we do get a swivel, and then we get an elbow to 90 degrees. Um, so really, yeah, other than the, the shoulders going out further, the arms are all right. We do get, even with this huge piece on the back, we do get a waist rotation, which I think is astonishing. We get legs really way forward, and those legs, again, using the ball joints, can go well back. We don't have a dedicated thigh swivel, but again, we get the swivel at the ball hinge that's at the knee. We get a 90 degree knee. We get, I guess, technically toe tilt forward. And we get, I guess, splits ability out that far, which isn't too bad at all for the time. Uh, the articulation is, like, it's not perfect. Uh, at the point that this guy came out, it was, it was better than most things that we had ever gotten up to that point. But, you know, by today's standards, it's obviously not perfect. Would it be nice if we had ratchets maybe at the hips um, to account for the extra weight in the back? Sure. Would it be nice if we had a dedicated thigh swivel? Sure. Would it be nice if the shoulders could go out further? That's the big weakness on the guy. The shoulders don't go out as far as I think most of us would like. He can get some okay poses, but he's not going to get super duper dynamic. Overall, I'm going to say that his articulation is a, it's a solid, especially for the time that it came out, it's a solid 8. He was a 9. Inferno, even now, 23 years later, I have to say, is a solid 8, 8.5 eight figure. It's fun. He's a fun figure. Is he perfect? No. Is he for everybody? Uh, no. But if you're a Beast Wars collector, I think you kind of owe it to yourself to add this guy to your Predacon ranks. He's still fun and functional all these years later. He's an overall score of an eight to an eight and a half. I'm gonna be kind today and say eight and a half. The only thing left to kind of address is how he looks with the rest of his team and where he fits in size wise. And there you go, there are my Beast Wars Predacons. From across the pantheon of Transformers releases, we have, you know, some newer iterations here in terms of Tankor, who, yes, I've said it a million times, I realize he's Beast Machines, but he technically follows Beast Wars Megatron, even though he's in a new form, blah, 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 blah. Either way, I stick him in here, and I use him as the character back when he kind of you know, it was just a brute who said pulverize, and you know, I'm good with my tank or being like that. 
That being said, we also have Generations Waspinator down on the far end. Uh, you know, from the same kind of uh, main era as Inferno here, we have uh, not only B, uh, not only Ultra Class Megatron, but we also have Tarantulas here. Now, this is the 10th anniversary version, but it's based on that original mold, of course. We have right down front the little basics versions of Quick Strike and uh, Pterosaur. We even have Rampage, Transmetals Rampage there in the back. So you can see where he fits in. He's one of the larger ones. And I think that makes sense because I, I, I feel like, you know, he buddied around a lot with Quick Strike and I, like to me, this size between Quick Strike and him pretty much makes sense. Maybe it wasn't quite as uh, astonishing of a difference in the animation, but I feel like it sort of was. I feel like that's kind of accurate. Nevertheless, Inferno, solid eight and a half. I dig it. This is how the team looks. There is only one more member to my Predacon team to go at it. He is one that I was very happy to get because he doesn't seem to be super duper abundant. And he's one that, while I was happy to get him, he also needed a lot of custom work to get him the way that I wanted him to be. You can probably guess, based on this smattering here, you can probably guess who it is. Oh, by the way, as I was going through everyone here, I actually neglected animated black arachnids. So, like, I get it, man. My team of Predacons is a mishmash of new and old and in between, but it works for me to have those kind of main core cast of characters. And of course, here we. <laughs> I'm sorry, wrong, wrong Inferno. This is the Autobot from G1. This is the the Ant Predacon. You know, good guy, bad guy, fire truck, fire ant. So, so I mean, I mean this guy. Okay, resetting here. So here we are, and here he is again, and like. <sighs> I can't deny, as much as I do not like ants, this guy's pretty fantastic. He has an interesting um, conversion. He has beautiful coloration. The paint apps that I did, sure, I think it makes it more accurate, but even without those, the sort of translucent plastic that was used is robust, and it has a kind of like a speckling to it that looks really, really nice in hand. The detailing on his tail section back here, especially the, like, if I can get it open here now, especially like the, like all the painted silver and blue inside is astonishing. You don't see that today, man. You don't see it today. So I, I absolutely dig it. Uh, the articulation for the time was quite good. Uh, the only real limitation, and I've made this criticism with figures before like Generation Skids or Crosscut, like uh, Classics um, Sideswipe and uh, Sunstreaker and Red Alert, is that the, you know, out to the side movement is more limited than I would have liked. I wish that the ball joint at the shoulder was a deeper socket, I suppose. Bigger cut on the top, I guess. But, like, again, this is one of those cases of, in the modern era, yeah, okay, that's a bit unfortunate. But for the time that this came out, for what he can do and what he does well, following the bricks that were G1, I don't think a lot of people in that era would have even really noticed this about the shoulders. The fact that they moved out at all was astonishing. The fact that we could bend the elbow was astonishing. He has gorilla arms. I didn't mention it in the articulation. He has no wrist articulation, which means his hand is always facing forward like this, unless, of course, you turn it to the side. Now the hand is correct, but we, of course, now we have gorilla arms. Um, you know, gorilla arms aren't new. They still haven't totally gone away, although you don't see it so much now. Most recently, the thing that comes to mind for gorilla arms would be probably, I don't know, the Dinobots from the Last Night line. Maybe, you know, maybe. So you still get it. I mean, those. Last night, Dinobots are around here, they're still on shelves. Like, you can still get a slug, no problem. Um, you know, and this goes back 20 plus years. No, it's great. It's a good figure. It's a fun figure. There's not a lot here to dislike other than that 
shoulder limitation. Besides that, it's fairly accurate. It's a good size, feels hefty. I like them. Anyway, let me know what you think about Beast Wars Inferno. If you want, you can also let me know what you think about, you know, G1 Inferno as well. You know, whatever you want to do, man. Nevertheless, I appreciate you dropping by giving me some of your extremely valuable time. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.